Many people have Dremel rotary tools in their home shops and reportedly one of the primary failures of these tools, although they're generally very reliable, is on the models with speed controllers, the speed controller itself may fail. Personally, I own two Dremel rotary tools. One's a fixed speed one that's very old, and the other is a more recent model that's uh, the model 395, which has adjustable speed. When I say recent, I mean that I bought this about 14 years ago. I'm pretty sure I bought it in 02 when it's now uh, 16. Um, so it's lasted a long time with the speed controller, but it finally got it to be intermittent and uh, sometimes wouldn't work at all. Sometimes it would jump around on speeds. I did investigate replacing it, but decided that everything else was probably great on it. If I just wanted to dig in and replace the speed controller, all would be well. Just in case there's anybody else in a similar situation, I thought I would try to quickly share uh, some pictures I took during the disassembly and reassembly of my Dremel 395. I think uh, from what I've read, the other Dremel tools with variable speed are very similar in design and layout, so I think most of these steps will apply to other models as well. The first step was to use a screwdriver to remove the uh, motor brush caps and the brushes themselves along with their springs. The next step was to unscrew the uh, collet nut and remove the collet and then unscrew the uh, housing cap. To open the housing a Torx number 15 bit is required and uh, these are readily available if you don't already have them from pretty much any hardware store. The uh, Torx screws that hold the housing together are removed. Uh, they should come out quite easily and at least on the 395 they're all the same type and length so there's no need to uh, pay close attention to which one came out of which hole but if you have a different model you might want to pay extra attention in this area. An important step before opening the housing is to carefully uh, open the housing just slightly and allow the collet lock pin to come out without dropping it in the floor and losing it and also the collet lock spring uh, which just sits loose inside the housing uh, between the shaft of the, uh, the motor and the collet lock pin. I have highlighted the spring and also uh, a cer another circle for the uh, hole in the motor shaft where the collet lock pin fits into. With the collet lock pin and spring carefully removed and set aside, the top of the housing can be lifted off the rest of the way. Here is a side view of the old speed controller. It's just modular and plugs in to the back of the motor and the two conductors from the power line then uh, plug into holes on the back of the speed, uh, speed controller itself. Before the speed controller can be removed from the motor, it's first necessary to remove the isolator ring, which is either a plastic or a rubber material, from the back bearing. And then the speed controller can slide off over the back bearing, as shown here. The two wires from the power cord uh, connect into holes in the back of the speed controller and they're held in by spring clips. Next to each hole where the wire goes in is a larger hole where you can push in a piece of stiff wire, a drill bit, anything like that, and pushing in firmly enough releases the spring clip and the wires just come right out. I already had the new speed controller on hand having ordered it on Amazon after checking the uh, Dremel user's manual and also verifying on the Dremel website that there was no uh, newer replacement part. It, the one that I got was the same one listed in the user's manual and I think it was about uh, $15 for this part. With the new speed controller ready it can simply be plugged into the back of the motor. Uh, I didn't take a picture of this so the photo shown here is uh, when I was taking the old speed controller off but they look the same so the photo works for this purpose. Um, the speed controller on my 395 has four pins. It's probably the same on other models. And there's no keying to the assembly, so it looks like it can be put on uh, two different ways. 
Um, I've read on a couple of blogs that some people thought it was important which way it went, but uh, I very much doubt that it makes any difference here. I think it's a universal motor and uh, probably doesn't care about the polarity of the windings. Uh, still, it's probably a good idea to mark the motor uh, in some way so that you put the new speed switch on the same way. The two wires from the power cord just plug back into the holes on the new speed controller. I don't think it makes any difference which one goes where, but again it's a good idea to make note of that when you take it apart and do it the same way just in case. After connecting the wires, the rubber or plastic isolator ring can go back onto the rear bearing as shown here. With the motor and speed switch assembly intact once again, it can be carefully lowered into the bottom half of the housing and aligned with the various ribs and other plastic pieces in there. Uh, it's a good idea at this point to place the uh, strain relief on the power cord into its holder, although I found that it tended to fall out if I wasn't very careful. And if I were to do it again, I might try to secure it with a piece of tape just to avoid that minor hassle. I found that the trickiest part of reassembly was getting the collet lock pin and collet lock spring back into the housing uh, correctly. Um, I've outlined here the collet lock pin put back into the housing with the little smaller end of the pin pointing inwards into the inside of the assembly. And I found that the best way to do it was to lay the collet lock spring on top of the collet lock pin. This again fits into the upper half of the housing and then holding that side uh, opened end up so the spring won't fall off, I lowered the bottom half of the housing with the motor and speed controller on top of it and that worked out much better than trying to do it the other way. Before putting the screws back into the housing it's important to this stage to check that the collet lock works properly so you can turn the uh, end of the motor shaft where the collet goes on with your fingers and try to engage the collet lock and make sure that it disengages when you release your finger from the pin. Uh, if that doesn't work perfectly then you've done something wrong and you better open it up and try again. The only thing left to do at this point is to put the torque screws back into the housing and put the uh, pieces back on the front end, the housing cap, the collet itself and the collet nut.